Apple is the world's most valuable company. Two weeks ago, Apple reported historic sales numbers, profits surging by a whopping 110%. For the Mar March quarter, the company earned more than 23 billions in profits. But do you know how Apple earned all of this money? By working with companies which use forced Uyghur labor in China. That's the claim of a new report. It says seven Apple supplies in China are using forced labor from Xinjiang. They participate in state-run programs, the same ones that are allegedly part of China's campaign of genocide against the Uyghurs. They're called poverty alleviation programs. Now, if you followed the show, you would know the truth about these re-education slash poverty alleviation slash integration programs that China runs. More than 1 million Uyghurs have been moved to concentration camps in Xinjiang. There they are tortured, sexually abused, raped and forced to pledge their allegiance to the Communist Party of China. And all of this is a matter of record. There are enough and more testimonies. From these concentration camps, thousands are transferred and forced to work in factories across China. And we've reported extensively on this. The United States says China is committing genocide against the Uyghurs. But American companies have no hesitation in working with firms that employ forced labor. And Apple is a repeat offender. In December last year, similar charges had come to light against Lens Technology. Lens Technology is a Chinese supplier of Apple. This firm allegedly used thousands of forced laborers from Xinjiang. In March 2020, the Australian Strategic Policy Institute published a detailed case study about Apple's operations in China. It describes how thousands of Uyghur workers were sent to at least four Apple suppliers. One of them was called O-Film. O-Film was using hundreds of Uyghurs as forced labor. And here is what's shocking about all of this. Apple CEO Tim Cook visited one of the O-Film factories during his trip to China in 2017. What did he do there? He praised O-Film for its quote-unquote humane approach towards employees. The statement was later deleted from Apple's website. Back in America, Apple was allegedly lobbying against a bill. A bill that aimed at stopping forced labor in China. And this report came out in November 2020. It claims that Apple wanted to water down key provisions of a bill, a bill that would have held American companies accountable for using forced Uyghur labor. Apple was lobbying against it. It did not want accountability for using forced labor in China. The bill is still being considered by American lawmakers. It has not been passed yet. And now, Apple has been caught working with human rights violators once again. What does the company have to say in its defense this time? Well, Apple says it hasn't found any evidence of forced labor in its supply chains. That's convenient to say the least. And Apple might remain blind to this evidence because dumping tainted Chinese factories will not be easy for Apple. It won't suit them. Two reasons. One, because of the high volume of output from them. And two, because of a potential backlash from Beijing. Two months back, the Chinese state fueled a boycott campaign against leading Western brands, companies like H&M and Nike. H&M hoardings were taken down in China. Nike shoes were being burned with video clips circulating on social media. Why do you think Chinese customers suddenly dumped these brands? Because these brands, Nike and H&M, had dared to speak out about forced Uyghur labor in Xinjiang. China retaliated with a nationalistic campaign Perhaps Apple fears a similar backlash, and those fears are not unfounded. But for the world's biggest company, this cannot be an excuse. As for China, anyone who wants to do business there, the rules are very, very clear. Either you're with the Communist Party or you're against it. And going against the party has serious repercussions. Let me give you the latest example of that. Mei Tuan is in a soup. Mei Tuan is like the Swiggy or Zomato of China. It's a food delivery app. Its CEO and billionaire founder recently shared a verse. It was written by a poet from the Tang Dynasty. It mocks 
a former Chinese emperor who cracked down on scholars and burned their books to consolidate power. People were quick to draw parallels with the present-day Chinese leader. Was the Meituan CEO criticizing Xi Jinping? Well, that's how the Chinese establishment interpreted that post. And it had consequences. Meituan stock plummeted to a seven-month low. That one post wiped out $16 billion worth of wealth. $16 billion. The chief executive deleted the verse. He said that he was only talking about his rivals in the post, but the damage was already done. The company is now under an antitrust investigation. Meituan is only the second tech giant in China to face such a probe. Guess who was the first one? Alibaba. The company was fined a record $2.8 billion. That's the price that Jack Ma had to pay for a speech criticizing Chinese regulators and the Communist Party. So you see the pattern. Chinese companies do not have a choice. They must live by the law of the land. But foreign companies do have a choice. And companies as big as Apple. Apple's website has a quote from its CEO, Tim Cook. It's in big, bold letters. It says, we do the right thing even when it's not easy. But from the looks of it, Apple is once again doing the easy thing, even if it's not right. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.